It does. Uh, um, okay, so why don't we uh, just go ahead and uh, watch um, this and we can sort of get in into, I mean, this will give the viewers a better idea um, of what exactly um, they do. Last night, I watched the sunset and thought how beautiful it looked. I started to worry about how cold it was going to get that night. Last night, I slept in a porta potty. Maybe this will be my last night on the street. God willing, it will be. I was homeless for eight and a half years on the streets of Cleveland. Um, I'm a recovering crack addict. I broke my addiction by selling the newspaper. The vendors initially came to Neoc because they heard about another, some homeless people in other cities doing this. It's just a paper that's written by homeless, formerly homeless or unsheltered people, and it's sold by them. It also is a way to have a voice for people who are often lost in causes that don't often get covered. I like dispelling the myths that people have about homeless people, and that's a big part of what we try to do with the paper. If you think all homeless people are lazy, don't want to work, once you meet one of our vendors and talk with them and read our paper, you change your way of thinking. I think it makes you want to help. Any of us can become homeless in this day and age. It doesn't take a lot. If you lose your job and you're unable to find one, you could become homeless. When you get an eviction and you lose everything, you could become homeless. We have our vendors who have to write in order to be sell, able to sell that issue. My first article actually wrote about eating some chicken wings out of the garbage can. I love working with the vendors, I really do, because they have some very, very good stories. They tell their life, every issue. Well, none of us are journalists, but if you come across as a person who has something that you may be interested in, has something that will change your mind about homelessness, about poverty in Cleveland, people stop, take a look, and then they listen, and then they buy the paper and read it. And it's not just the money. It's a part of something that makes a difference in their life. My message to the customers is, if you see somebody selling one of our newspapers, stop and talk to them. Even if you don't buy a paper, chances are they'll change your conception of what a homeless person is. You both will probably walk away a better person for it. Wait for it. All right. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I guess what we can um, talk about uh, is, a, you know, a little bit. So when I was approached, I'll, I'll share a little background um, just in terms of, you know, the, the, the challenge. The, so the challenge was the time constraint, right? Because you don't want to, and I've done this before, is, you know, went out with no real directive from, from anyone, just commissioned to shoot a whole bunch of footage. We knew there was going to be editing um, you know, some sort of like final, either a highlight sizzle or narrative short um, that would have to be delivered. But since there was like no plan, no, no nothing, um, oftentimes uh, what would happen is it would just invariably cause so much headaches, confusion, lot, lots of going back and forth because we're figuring out the story afterwards. And we have so much footage because we had no direction. So we have to cover all our bases that it just it creates a mess and projects take longer and longer and longer. So I think the most important thing that we did for this project was with our limited time, we still used the first, even though we had what, like five to seven days, we two, three of those days were really pretty much pre-production stuff. So we were storyboarding, we, we, Sarah brought up the subject, so we got to um, do our research portion into it, figured uh, what the most likely compelling narrative um, 
uh, we can come up with, uh, set up meetings uh, for pre-interviews with Angelo, the people over at NEOC who help support the Cleveland Street Chronicle. And I think personally, I don't know, you guys tell me, but I think personally that this is the most crucial part of um, why I feel like this project turned out, um, you know, um, something that uh, we were happy with. Okay, so um, I am not sure if I give your question right. Okay, right. so I'll, I'll, I'll just say it, then I'll I'll, I'll answer it. Um, you know, that was definitely my experience. Um, um, hold on, let me, I don't know why it's, let me go back to gallery view. Um, so I think uh, that for anyone out there, I guess I'll put it this way. I just wanted to get other people's inputs, but I'll put it this way. The most important thing you can do um, before starting a project is take pre-production seriously. You want to map out, you want to look at all, if you, if you want something smooth that you can deliver, at, you know, um, in a timely fashion, don't waste your time uh, with nonsense, you know, whittle down the story as much as, as you can in the beginning. Uh, you obviously want to leave some flexibility because you want to be able to pivot and change depending on what kind what comes up because you know this is a documentary and you, these are real people and you start to learn some things but i think doing the pre-interview with uh with angelo doing all the location scouts meeting with people at neoc mm -hmm. um those were the reasons why i think we were able to deliver a a, a product like this in time um and yes. by deadline. yeah and neoc was also super receptive to us um like i think it's pretty funny that we uh, went there on uh, without even like calling them we just kind of showed up and yeah. we're like hey we were thinking about making yeah. this film <laughs> yeah um, that's a, that's like a okay. yeah super super specialty <laughs> so so here's the deal um yeah as mike said um we didn't have that much of a time to come up with like you know a very sophisticated plan to do stuff so one thing you have to keep in mind when you don't have enough time is first of all keep things easy don't make things complex and like just go for it because if you mm -hmm. lose chance if you lose time on correspondence or if you want to like manage or schedule like meetings with people way beforehand it's just like a lot of time going to be wasted so we decided to just go for it try to we actually we called them very briefly before we uh went there i believe that um the, i don't think we it, asked about the we didn't the talk location about the film, though no no we didn't talk but we said that oh we want to like know more about um uh, this um uh, like this paper and if you guys have a, have time can we like walk in and we asked about their timing and they said yeah come into the office something as simple as that we didn't even get connected to the right person at, at the beginning, but we just decided to go for it. And I remember it was three of us in the car and we were still like deciding whether we have to go to this location first or go to another potential location, which was another church. Uh, that we, we oh, wanted oh, not location, but like subject matter. Yeah. Sub subject oh, yeah. matter. Yeah. Because of the subject matter, we want to like, also there but then we decided to go for it and i pushed you guys that let's go let's go and uh, let's uh, initiate the talk with them and try to meet uh, the director over there and see if they can help us and as sarah said we were and, and help us in a way of like giving us access because that was going to be the trickiest part with like the uh, the time limit right because yes. you have to work with other people's schedules as well um, so yeah. the people in New York were just amazing um, to work yes. with um, yeah. because they were super accommodating um, and just like kind and, and generous people mm -hmm. with their time. Please feel free to like and subscribe. Ask these people. Yeah, hit yeah. that button. We want to hear from you. It's so easy. Mm -hmm. And you will not get disappointed. Yes. Please cut that last part. <laughs>